Hi, I'm Jonathan and I'm an instructor at the Bristol and Wessex Aeroplane Club. Now, if you've been watching the last videos I put up, you'll see the very last one was about departure briefings. And that got me thinking because we talked a bit there about emergencies on departure and in particular engine failures before or after rotation. And what I've been doing is just looking at actually what happens when you do get an engine failure at various points during the flight sequence. And I'd like to share that with you and hopefully give you some tips about how to deal with this, probably one of the worst of all emergencies. The first scenario we're going to look at is anything going wrong during the takeoff roll. And hopefully the solution for this is fairly obvious. Close the throttle, smoothly apply the brakes and bring the aircraft to a halt. A full power. Temperatures and pressures are in the green. Oh, don't like the sound of that. Power's idle. I'm applying the brakes. Golf Charlie Hotel stopping. Golf Charlie Hotel, Roger. Do you require assistance? Stand by, Golf Charlie Hotel. I really don't like the look of this. I'm going to run the shutdown drills and I'm going to get out. Now let's have a think about if the aircraft has already left the ground. Depending on how high we are, there may be the option to close the throttle, lower the nose and land the aircraft back on the runway. We're going to lose power at 250 feet AGL. Right, I've lost power, lowering the nose, trim for 75 knots. Mayday, 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 Golf Charlie Hotel engine failure, force landing ahead. Golf Charlie Hotel, mayday acknowledged, emergency services on the way. Easy 246, go around. I say again, go around, acknowledge. Easy 246, going around. So as you can see, we're running off the end of the runway, but we won't be too far from the end. So it's interesting to know that in a Cessna 172, which has a glide ratio of a, about nine to one, from 250 feet, we are able to close the throttle, land back on the runway and just roll slightly off the end. And there it is. In the third scenario, we're going to look at a case where there is no useful runway remaining. We lower the nose, trim for the best glide speed, 75 knots in this case, choose a suitable landing site, roughly 45 degrees either side of the nose, but no more, and plan our approach into the field. In this example, you'll see that I don't need to use flaps, and the choice was obvious, as we briefed in the departure brief from the last video, we knew that the best landing sites off runway 27 are to the left. We're going to get an engine failure 500 feet above ground level, so that's 1,100 feet. Right, that's an engine failure, I'm lowering the nose, trimming for 75 knots, I know the best sites are to the left. Mayday, 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 Golf Charlie Hotel, engine failure, forced landing. Golf Charlie Hotel, Roger Mayday, assistance is on the way. So important to point out here that this is just generic scenery, it's not actual scenery. Um, but in any case, I went left because that's what I did in the briefing. Important to fly the airplane all the way down to the ground into a flare and then you're, you're on the brakes. Now one of the things that we really drill into students when we're talking about engine failures and engine failures after takeoff is not to attempt a return back to the field. But I do hear people sometimes around the club, they can remain nameless, talking about well if I'd got a certain amount of height I can just turn back and land on the runway in the wrong direction. And fair enough, Bristol's got a long runway, you can carry quite a lot of tailwind and you won't run out of runway. However, I thought with the simulator, let's just try it. Let's see what happens, for example, if we try and turn back to the field once we've got to circuit height, 1,600 feet, and we're established on the crosswind leg. So there goes the engine, normal drill, lower the nose, trim for 75 knots and I'm going to start turning back towards the airfield and as you can see 
I reacted very quickly there. Probably if you did get an engine failure, it would take you a few seconds to realise what was going on and it would take you longer to initiate the turn. So I'm doing my best to maintain 75 knots, gentle turn back towards the airfield. And let's just see how much height we lose in this turn. It's quite remarkable. I was surprised by the time we roll out the turn, we've gone from 1,600 feet down to 900 feet, which at Bristol is only 300 feet above ground level. And as you can see now, our options are really, really limited. Um, we haven't really got enough height even to turn into wind. It's an eight knot headwind today to complete the landing. So we're just at the mercy of what's in front of us now. And as you can see, it's not gonna end particularly well. We're now gonna pick up having leveled off at 1,600 feet, departing from Bristol on crosswind with the same engine failure. This time, we're going to do what we've been trained for. We're going to look at the best options available into wind, using this leg now as our base leg, choose a suitable field and plan the approach. And as you'll see in this one, I use flap to steepen the glide angle and get the aircraft into the field that I'm choosing with a headwind to help slow us down. So there goes the engine again. And we're all familiar with the drill now. Lower the nose, trim for 75 knots. And we're gonna do what we've been trained to do. We're gonna have a look out to our right into wind. This is in our base leg and look at options. And luckily there are a number of suitable fields into wind that we can go for. So I'm gonna turn in to the group of fields that looks the best. We don't need to finalize a decision yet. Let's see the effect of the headwind. And a gentle turn, not losing too much altitude. Having a look to see if there's anything obviously wrong, changing the fuel tanks, try the magnetos. No engine still not responding, so we're going to commit to this landing. Mayday, mayday, mayday. Golf Charlie Hotel engine failure, forced landing to the southwest of the field. Golf Charlie Hotel, mayday acknowledged, emergency services on the way. So that's the mayday done. Now I'm going to secure the engine and focus on a good landing. In the last scenario, we're going to look at what happens if we have an engine failure at circuit altitude, 1,600 feet, downwind of runway 27. So I'm on downwind at 1,600 feet. I can turn either onto a left or right for my base leg. And as I look out, there's good options either side, but I think I might be able to make it into the airfield boundary. So I'm going to turn left and start heading towards the airfield. Now, generally speaking, airfields have lots of green space around them and it doesn't matter whether I make the runway or not, I'll be inside the boundary with the emergency services ready to help me. So here we are, downwind of runway 27 at Bristol and the all too familiar engine failure. So first actions, lowering the nose, trimming for 75 knots and I can see there's a lot of good options out to my left, including the airfield, so I'm going to turn in towards that now. Having a look to try and resolve the issue, normal restart drills. No, that hasn't worked, so I'm going to get out of Mayday. Mayday, 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 Golf Channel Hotel, engine failure, making a forced landing within the airfield boundaries. Golf Charlie Hotel, Roger Mayday, all runways available for landing. Wind 270 degrees, eight knots. This is a good exercise to practice with an instructor. Something I do a lot with students when we're doing circuit emergencies. Downwind at circuit height at Kendall, for example, cut the engine and see if we can glide in and where we're going to end up. I find with a PA28, if you want to put it back on the runway, you do need a little bit of crosswind in your favor helping you make it back to the airfield. But you don't leave it to chance, make sure there's plenty of other options in terms of other fields available to you. So as you can see, we're going to make it into the airfield boundary, just clear the airfield fence, and that's a good result. So there you have it. Sophie and I had a fun afternoon making this video and both playing on the flight simulator. And hopefully you'll agree that it's a good way that an inexpensive simulator can be put to good use. Now it taught me a few lessons. One of them was that it's pretty much impossible to turn back towards the runway 
even if you've got up to circuit height, you're very likely to come unstuck and lose a lot of height during the turn. Another thing it reinforced for me was the priority of aviate, navigate, communicate. Aviate first, fly the aeroplane with an engine failure. That means getting your best glide speed and trim so it will fly hands off at that as quickly as you can. Second, navigate, which in this case means choosing a landing site and planning your approach into it. And third is communicate. It doesn't have to be a polished mayday, but get one out if you can so that air traffic control knows what you're doing. And I should th say thank you to Sophie and my wife Nicola for playing air traffic control and the EasyJet pilot that you might have heard doing the go around in uh, one of the early examples. So I hope this has inspired you to get out a flight simulator and have a practice. Let me know how you've used it and also let me know any hints or tips that you have about engine failures after takeoff. I'd be really interested to learn. I hope to see you back at the club soon or failing that on the next video. Bye for now.